Now, I kind of slipped into that, didn't I? I didn't hit it. It was kind of smooth. It was kind of you know smooth, I mean? though. Yeah. All right on, brother. We are once again on our some of our favorite locations in the Halton Hills area. We, in the wintertime, love to go around and, uh, and visit businesses and do our little vlog here. So welcome to the show, Big Daddy Russ Horton. I'm Lee Lakin with Leah Lyowood, of course. And we are where? We're at the Furnace Room Brewery. Brewery. Yeah. And uh, at, at, at the Ghost Station in downtown Georgetown. And um, absolutely gorgeous place. Extraordinary place. place. Uh, That's a good way of putting it, Big Daddy. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. It's, it's very you good know, way. I mean, uh, uh, we're so proud. Like when you're from a hometown, uh, wherever you are, if you have a brewery in town, that, that is your sacred place. Uh, well, it's, and, the, it's the sacred elixir. And it certainly is. And, so, uh, and they're famous for their Chicken Man beer. The Chicken Man beer is right here, and Leah will show you that Chicken Man beer. As a matter of fact, I had a great promotion about, um, what, two or three weeks ago, I guess, where Chicken Man was riding around Georgetown. And if yeah. you spotted him, uh, you'd win a prize. Yeah. Or, uh, they actually, really we talked about this on a few episodes back, that uh, they actually went out and found his last known bicycle. Really? That was owned by the Chicken yeah, Man. Yeah, they had to go out into yeah, Tavistock into, into, or something, into something like that. Yeah. yeah, out near London to yeah. get it. And uh, yeah, it was very, very cool. And Chicken Man beer is really their their primary one. And then their other one is Beardmore. Obviously, uh, I think it's for the Beardmore family. That was well, very the Beardmore, prominent. Yeah, very prominent family. Very in this prominent area. family here for many, 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 many years. We'll get the owner of the first uh, team in yeah, here. Yeah, we're gonna have one Andy, of one of the owners, uh, step in and do a bit of an interview once we get through our uh, our opening remarks. But um, yeah, we're looking forward to it. And great location, though. Eh? Yeah. Just a beautiful spot mm -hmm. in here, yeah. and you can literally look down and see all the vats and stuff where they make it like it's very open and very uh, if you watch the video you'll see you'll see all the pictures uh, yeah you'll see some of the pictures as we go through we've got you know trains going by here so books, very, there's there's all kinds of books on yeah. beer that you can read while you while you sit with your family and watch the trains go by so yeah we're basically right at uh the go train station but i believe it's elgin street this is elgin yeah it's elgin yeah, this think, is elgin yeah, yeah it's, it's um, the tail end of elgin yeah but it's it's the end of the go station so it's not hard to find the Furnace Room Brewery, believe me. No, and we're definitely. brought to you by Max Tires, of course, 905-873-9255. They have the lowest prices on tires and accessories. They have licensed mechanics. And uh, really, if you haven't got your snows on by now, <laughs> uh, did you yeah. slip down a hill somewhere or, or yeah. slide into someone? You really should get your snows on. But give them a call first because they are very busy right now this time of year putting them on. You know, it's my chicken my man, chicken man the toque. That's a nice looking hat, actually. It is, it is. I'm, 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 I'm gathering toques from everywhere. I know. We, we got I got Raider my Raiders, Raiders toque, of course, as well. But uh, I guess the big story uh, this week is that there was a, a robbery yeah, at the yeah. Bell store. Pretty brazen robbery. Yeah, it was. Uh, Halton Police looking in uh, for two men following the armed robbery of a Georgetown Bell store on Thursday. November the 10th at around 4.45 p.m., two individuals entered the 330 Guelph Street business, at which point one man pulled out a handgun yeah. and demanded the employees hand over cell phones, according to police. It's alleged the suspects escorted the employees and two customers to the rear of the store and then went behind the counter, uh, filling a bag with cell phones, small amount of cash from the register as well. Must have been a terrifying experience. And, and two, they would have no cash there, really. No, really it's yeah. all interact. That's interact. right. It's interact. all interact. Like, yeah. uh, the first suspect is described as wearing a black beanie, Ooh. white Excuse surgical me. mask, Excuse black me. joggers, and white basketball shoes. The second man is described as wearing a black beanie, a black zip-up sweater, black pants, black gloves, and black <laughs> shoes. And the suspect vehicle is described as a newer model Acura SUV. I wonder if it's black. I don't yeah, think. I wonder, I don't yeah. It doesn't say what color it is. <laughs> Anyone with information, of course, about this incident or any other is asked to contact Halton Police at 905-825-4747 or you can contact Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS or go right to the, you can go right to haltoncrimestoppers.ca and, uh, yeah, and you will always remain Anonymous. That's right. On that so, one. so uh, yeah, if you could happen that, but what a brazen robbery! Uh, just uh, and like you said, I think you nailed it right on the head. That it must have just been absolutely terrifying. Well, when you see a gun, uh, you know this is Canada. Yeah. This is not United yeah. States. Uh, Sorry, hat's a little warm. And uh, but uh, 
you know, you got to. And I worry about some of my friends that work around town at night. Hey, you uh, and me. You, you know, you're you know, by yeah. yourself. Yeah, I'm a big fellow though. Take care of myself. But I, I worry about my friends at the convenience stores in, uh, in town overnight, uh, where they really are on their own. Yeah. And, well, get uh, this. I have somebody come to my door the other day. Young girl, very pretty young girl, very young, very small, by herself soliciting for Kojiko, trying to sell people on Kojiko, and she's alone, and it's dark, and I'm thinking, what person would send somebody like this out by themselves that is so vulnerable? Yeah. yeah. Like, are you getting, Kojiko, shame on you, absolutely shame on you for doing that. Two. You're not allowed to solicit door to door in Halton Hills people. It's a bylaw here. We're one of the only places around that have that bylaw, and it's because of the Jehovah's Witnesses. That's my phone. Yeah. <laughs> James Bond over here. Oh. Oh, it's my diabetes. Um, so yeah, I, I just, I, it's, I, and I told her that. I said, you know, you should not be out here by yourself. Yeah. Like this, and she was young. I, I'm no more than 19 years old. Oh. Like really young, and I'm thinking, anybody that hired you to do that should their ass should be fired. Mm. You should have never been out there on your own like that. And the poor girl looked terrified. Wow! Like I just I felt so bad for her, and I'm thinking, Anything well, for a buck, right? yeah, shame on you, Kojiko, shame on you. So, yeah. so being at the brewery, uh, as we usually do, we try to get our 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 hosts to join us for an interview and. Uh, so we're going to take a short break right now. We're going to take a little commercial break right now. We're going to see some shots of the uh, brewery here. And we're going to come back with, uh, with Andy, one of the owners of the brewery. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. Right on. It's like being in Bewitched, you know. One day I'm here, the next day I'm not. All right, welcome back everybody. We are once again at Furnace Room Brewery on Elgin Street in Georgetown, right in where the GO train station is. And we're sitting down with Andy, one of the owners of the uh, cool, cool, really fun place. Uh, what a great atmosphere you've got here, Andy, and uh, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us and, yep. and and letting us come in and invade your space and take it up a little bit. Yeah, you um, guys don't take up a lot of space. So no, it's, it's no, okay. we're, we're pretty good. <laughs> Big Daddy's, a, you know, a little bit. Um, <laughs> but that, he fits that, here. Yeah, he fits in here very well. And uh, what a really cool building. Um, when did you guys open up? So the brewery uh, opened up in 2018, December of 2018, uh, and uh, to... Uh, a lot of fan support from from the town. Absolutely. Actually, everybody was quite juiced on this <laughs> yeah. happening here. So the wow. uh, we went kind of beer in town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it was good. And this is a beer town, very much so. Um, you know, that I've even heard reports that the the beer store here in this in town has for, per capita has sold more beer than any other beer store in Southern Ontario. I did not know that, uh, but I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, you know, so we knew the sales were good. I mean, like we get huge support from the local LCBOs uh, here. Right. They move uh, our beer quite well, and uh, the beer store also carries us here. So we got we got lots of love from uh, Georgetown, and we're happy about that's, it. That's dynamite, dynamite. Yeah. Um, so, what made you go with the Chicken Man beer? What? How? How did that come to, to life? Okay. Well, I, I came. It, like all great ideas, it came it came to light in a in a uh, basement uh, drinking beer. Right. Uh, right. right. <laughs> so they were trying to come up with uh, uh, names for for the various beers that uh, there was four core beers initially that all had local ties right. uh, that were developed and the Chicken Man is kind of like a bit of a a bit of a cele cause celeb in, in town. Yeah. So he was uh, he, everybody was familiar with him. He rode around uh, for the 70s and 80s uh, with a chicken on a bicycle. I mean, right. he had that kind of this kind. Of sells it. it kind of sticks out like yeah. you know you, you can't miss it and uh and and the fun thing was is you guys just did a promotion with his last original bike 
that, that's last right. known original yep, bike. I, I uh, a couple, well, about a month ago, I went out to uh, London, Ontario, right, uh, to uh, cool. the, where he where he lived in the last portion of his life, right. And there was a truck company there that uh, kept his bicycle miraculously because it was seven years prior that he'd actually passed. Oh my God! And so the bicycle sat in the shop for for seven years. Holy uh, and I would think the, the uh, you know great heart on the owner of that uh, to, to keep on keep hold of that and uh, through uh, word of mouth uh, while research was being done for an article in the local uh, news uh, news uh, online news feed right uh, there was connections made I introduced uh, the reporter Mansoor to uh, his brother George uh, George's brother, who is still alive but lives out in eastern Ontario, I connected those two together, and then it kind of got uh, pieced back to us that uh, that where he lived uh, last, right. uh, the bicycle was still there. That's so amazing. Had to have it. <laughs> That's an incredible story. That is so incredible. I just I think it's an awesome story. And we were talking a little bit too. Uh, you know, the, the last time you and I met. Uh, you know, we all know uh, little Ricky passed away uh, a few months back, and he was another iconic uh, guy, a lot like the Chicken so Man I'm here hearing. in town. Yes. So I'm hearing. Um, pretty much, I would say nine tenths of this town knows little Ricky. Um, he was a he was a staple here in town. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that off air. Uh, but you guys have it was really cool. You were talking about it off air with us. Um, you have some really cool stuff going on here. What, what, what's some of the, the fun events that you've got going on? Yeah, so things are clicking along here. We're uh, rebuilding the path back to normality. Right, right yeah, from, that too, from yeah. Two and a half the years new or whatever normal. it was. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're wanting Georgetown to come back in, and, and embrace their brewery. Uh, so we're putting on events here to uh, get them in, drinking some great quality beer. Uh, last night we had a trivia. It's a dynamite one. Tri oh. Thanks, man. Uh, we had a trivia night and it was sold out. Right. Tonight on. after you guys uh, leave here, we've got a comedy night with, uh, with uh, Sin Bin. Uh, they're coming in and they're putting on a comedy show for us. So there's, I don't live in Georgetown. I'm not very far. I'm only about half an hour away. But there's Georgetown doesn't have a whole lot of options. Yeah. And I want to add some options for people to to come out yeah. to you know because we've got we're t i think everybody's tired of living in their in their house for the last two uh, and a half absolutely. years so they want to go out yeah and and go out and do something different not, not just go sit in a pub and watch the big screen tvs on you know you can go do that in so many different places and, and this venue is very very cool it's a neat little Thanks. setup you've got going on here um the idea of doing the, the balcony out there is just a, a brilliant one if you can you know get the get the approvals for all that i'm sure there's going to be some yeah there's a, they, it's it's a battle i mean you know uh, it took us a while uh, logistics wise uh through through applications to uh bring in uh the ability to serve food right so that's yeah. now in place we got a variance for, with the support of the town and uh so we're we're starting just serving some small snacks right at this point in time but we hope to add a kitchen uh it has to be outside the brewery, but we are going to add a mobile right. kitchen uh, to the brewery so people can add this as another location Absolutely. for them to come eat. Because well. in the summertime, you guys do stuff events outside. We and do, stuff yeah, like the that patio as well. Yep. So yep. if you're looking for a great place for an event and stuff like that, get in touch with Andy for sure. Yep. Uh, what are what are your main beers? How many how many are you carrying? Well, right now we've got about uh, eleven different beers oh, in, wow. in can. Are right now the two that are on the table here are our principal uh, skews or part of our initial two. Uh, Guess I'm taking that one home. <laughs> yeah, that's a keeper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, that's the Beardmore. That's right. Beardmore, yeah. Right. So that's a a, a, a Lagerdale. It's a Kolsch style right. of beer. Yep. It's a very easy drinking beer. Uh, not too strong a beer uh, at 4.5. And the other beer here is uh, yeah, our, our chicken man, yeah. iconic Chicken Man. And so that's a pale okay. ale. It's a little bit stronger, 5.4 as far as the ABV goes. You want that more of yeah. a kick, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's uh, I've had both of them and they're both excellent beers. And, Thank you. And, and I love uh, the fact that you guys are here in town and, you know, and we're seeing more and more of these crap breweries, you know, pop up all over small towns. There's a lot. All, all <laughs> over the place. You know, I, you were telling me the numbers earlier. It was quite shocking. Yep. Um, but uh, so really it boils down to, uh, you know, we just want to be able to present a great venue for all of Georgetown and Acton to come check out come see what it's about try some really really cool beers and, and like i said you get to see how it's made like it's yeah pretty, so pretty yeah, cool yeah. process we've got, we got a great view oh, here the view is you know, amazing. over our brew house uh we've got a mix leo of have pictures in there later yeah, so. a 15 barrel and 30 barrel system going on 
Uh, like you come during the weekdays if you if you get a break and you can actually see us working in the back there. So it's it's yeah. got, it's interesting, right? Yeah. Everybody, you know, everybody likes to watch other people work. Dynamite. <laughs> well, we want to thank Andy for joining us and letting us uh, filling us in on what what this cool place is all about, and uh, and allowing us to come in and invade his space, of course. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely be back. Uh, we'll do this again sometime soon. And uh, fantastic. And uh, maybe even show up for one of those trivia nights because that sounds like a lot. Little Rick and Beer. Yeah, we're going to talk. We're, we're, we're going to talk, talk about that, okay? Uh, right. But yeah, if, if you guys are watching this and you want to see Little Ricky Beer, leave a comment on the page. <laughs> no pressure. We'll be back in just oh a few my. minutes with Big Daddy, finish <laughs> up the news. Uh, we'll be back with Big Daddy in just a minute and finish up the news. We're going to take a little break. And thanks again, Andy. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Cheers. it. Bye. And we're back. Okay. Big Daddy Russ Horton once again. That was an uh, interesting interview. That was a great interview. Great, really nice guy, man. Yeah. He's a big boy. He's a he's, he's a, a line, big fella. He's a former uh, offensive lineman, I think. Yeah, like uh, that'll do. I, it. As soon as I met him and shook his hand, I knew he was a football player because yeah. I played football for years. You can tell he's a he's, he's a big boy. Yes, he definitely boy. is a great guy, and they've done just an absolutely awesome job here. So yeah. uh, we're very happy to be able to bring you all, all these cool places that we get to you know yeah. get to go, like Zena's place in, in Acton. There, we yeah. were just talking about uh, Appalachian you know, and uh, yeah, symposium. Appalachian. And Next now. week we'll be at the Appalachian. Uh, Crazy Chester will be at the Appalachian as yeah. well. Tommy's as well. Yeah, Kathy, love Kathy at Tommy's. I love going to Tommy's. Tommy's is a is a great place, and they have. Awesome food. I there. still want the chicken wire. Yeah. They gotta put the chicken wire up yeah. just to give it that authentic feel. I actually, we gotta get a picture with the chicken man's bike. Yeah, it's down in the back there, and we're gonna take you for a tour during the brewery. Now, getting back to the news. Yeah, we gotta get through the news uh, too. This is why we do this. Yeah, uh, uh, Halton police have arrested two men in Halton Hills following a shooting all the way out in London that officers believed is related to a rivalry between tow truck companies. Uh, this has been going on for quite a while actually. On Saturday, November 12th, approximately 10.20 p.m., London police said the alleged victim was driving a tow truck in London's Adelaide Street South in the Osgood area where a rival company's tow truck began following him. Police allege the occupant of this rival tow company pulled out a handgun, fired six shots, with five rounds striking the other tow truck's tailgate and one passing through its rear windshield. Again, talk about scare the crap out of you. No kidding. London police officers said their investigation led them here to Halton Hills, where Halton police made two arrests on the 10th side road in Trafalgar Road area at 12.19 a.m. on Sunday, November 13th. A 21-year-old London man and a 25-year-old London man have been jointly charged with occupying a motor vehicle with a firearm, reckless discharge of a firearm, with intent to injure and possession of a restricted or prohibited uh, handgun. London police officers said their investigation... Uh, oh, that's it. So a 21-year-old man and a 25-year-old man have been jointly charged. They're from London. They're not they're from, from here, London, but they, but they were, were he, here. They were caught here. Uh, they busted known somebody here and said oh we better get the hell out of dodge yeah and uh and book thanks it out for coming to our hometown yeah, yeah exactly really next time stay that. in your hometown buddy yeah. but yeah tow truck uh, rivalry things have been going on for a long long time the ones in mississauga there where they were setting trucks on fire and it was crazy wow that's so, uh, that's serious stuff yeah and you don't want to get involved like in you say that. driving down the road and somebody's shooting at you uh, that's shit your pants moment. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Pardon my French. Now, uh, we're talking about masks again. Yeah, we're yeah. We're getting into flu season, I guess. Yeah. Uh, the province is strongly recommending that families or anyone interacting with young children wear masks due to a sudden rise in hospitalization amongst our kids. Uh, we're calling on all families, all social settings, as we go into a very social time of year, to please, please be careful around our most vulnerable. And this is from Kieran Moore, the province's chief medical officer of health. Uh, Dr. Moore said the province is also recommending that everyone wear masks in public settings. It is not mandating the wearing of masks, of course, noting that it is impossible to enforce in social settings. Well, I wouldn't say that. They, 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 did, they, it. they did it already. They did it for two years. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, it's not impossible. I was <laughs> just thinking that. Instead, Mr. Dr. Moore said he is hoping to educate those interacting with young children why it's important to wear masks. And not only the young kids, you have to just feel the situation out, folks. If you go to a hospital, put on a mask. Doctor's office, put on a mask. If you're Pretty around much. somebody old, um, like me and Lee, put on a mask. <laughs> no, seriously. If you're around seniors, 
be careful. Yeah. Um, well, they're the vulnerable ones, right? The, the right. young and the seniors. So I mean, we both, we've um, all three of us have, have had COVID. We and know you know, what it's like. right now they've got this wicked uh, problem with not being able to get children's Tylenol and Advil and all this stuff. And uh, so the, the parents have no choice. These kids are very, very ill, so they're taking them to the hospital. Mm -hmm. And now the hospitals are being flooded and, and, and this and that. So it, it's just a really vicious cycle that's going on right now. And the fact that why don't we have Tylenol cold and stuff for children in this country? What the fuck is going on? Exactly. Are people hoarding it like the toilet paper again? Is this a, 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 a thing? Or? In fact, here's another thing. I saw it come up on our, on our, our, one of our pages. There have been mothers that have gone across the border to the States, I believe, Buffalo. Yeah. And they're looking for it, and they said, no, sorry, we cannot sell to Canadians because they're going over and they're taking their stock. Mm -hmm. Well, serious times. Well, so. They're saying by next week we're supposed to have a bunch come in. And what the stores have to do, limit. Limit. Yeah. You get one. That's what, one, one, this, one per this customer. This BS of people being able to go in and just stockpile is no, you can't they're, do that. They're already doing that in, in where I am. Food, the signs are up. Lettuce. There's oh, lettuce up. right now. Every, no, there's other things too. They're all starting because that shortage that we've talked about, mm. it's coming. Yeah. All right, so <coughs> all these parents are going to be wondering what the hell's going on on Sunday. And uh, here's how the Coopy strike will affect Halton District School Board schools in the event of a strike by the education workers this upcoming Monday, November 21st. The Halton District School Board will keep its elementary and secondary schools open for in-person learning on that day. Should the strike continue beyond Monday, Elementary schools will revert to teacher-led remote learning for students as of November 22nd, including those with special education needs until the strike is over. Secondary students, however, will continue with in-person learning, including those attending grades 7 to 12 schools, in schools like Aldershot, Burlington Central, and Acton District High School will be open. Awesome. So awesome. well, here I, we go again. <laughs> I, I, the teachers' union, I think, strikes more than any other union I've ever heard of in my entire life. And they were all going, "We want a one dollar an hour raise." Well, you're getting a one percent raise. It works out to being a dollar an hour raise. Do you remember when we were kids? These we are math teachers. To, we used to go to school, and we used to go to school every day. And yeah. School, school, school. Now no, they're I'm going a couple of weeks. I'm, oh, this is happening. Oh, you can't go to school because this is happening. These poor kids. You know what? Are, I, I, have a lot, I have a lot of friends that are teachers. These people should not be teachers. Uh, I would tell stories about them on here if I could, but these people should not be teachers. And yet, they're getting paid $64,000 a year to teach our children nothing about life. And I'm sorry. These teachers are way overpaid. They have the highest retirement package of anybody in this country other than a politician. And even in some cases, better than a politician. And it's, I'm sick and tired of it. It's, I, I would homeschool your kids, people. Homeschool your kids. I, I, more of all my friends that are teachers, and there's about a dozen of them, 10 of them, I would never let teach my child, ever. <laughs> I would never let them teach my child. And it's sad. It's really, really sad. Yeah, there's two of them that were great people and good teachers, but, and they complain about class sizes. I had 30 students in my class when I was in high school. I had 35 at some point. We had 42 in one class. And you yeah. people are sitting here bitching and whining about 29 students in your class. And we used to walk to school both ways in the snow. In the snow, uphill, uphill both, both ways. ways. Don't forget that. Okay. With, with, with milk bags on my feet inside my boots and that's truth <laughs> that wasn't uncommon yeah. to have a grocery bag in the that's what i mean and the, in, yeah and, and there we are going running. up the hill both ways in our chicken man too yeah there you go <laughs> and, uh, no. anyway now, uh this is, this is a great story uh james Asselstein, regular lottery player local uh won the lottery Asselstein yeah. stopped by quick pick variety on guelph street Hello to everybody over at Quick Pick, by yeah. the way. <laughs> we're we're and, coming and, to go get some tickets. And uh, he bought a lightning lotto ticket. He played it. The terminal shut down. The clerk told him he'd won the jackpot. 505000 
$875.50. He added $4 on another ticket, bringing his total prize to $4 more than that. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It was amazing, the 64-year-old Georgetown man said. I told my wife and she didn't believe me at first. And when she finally realized it was true, she was so excited and happy for me and herself. I'm and sure. And herself, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Five hundred thousand dollars. You could almost buy a house with that. Uh, you could have bought almost several houses a few years ago. Yeah. Now you can yeah. only buy uh, half a house. Half a yeah. house. But uh, semi-detached. They're dropping right now, though. So since February, they've gone down one hundred seventy thousand, apparently, yeah. approximately. It's not apparently. a great time to sell your house right now. I'll tell you that. Uh, it depends how long you've owned it. Somebody who's owned their house for thirty years, yeah. probably a great time for them to yes, sell. Yes, yes, yes. But if you know, you're, so uh, if you're if you're talking about flipping houses not the time to do that at all. Uh, heading down to Burlington on this story, Burlington trustee Margot Shuttleworth was acclaimed chair for a second term at the inaugural meeting of the Halton District School Board on, back on Wednesday. So That's right. And uh, Congratulations, sir. All of the uh, uh, the elections are done now and uh, yes, Halton, Town, Hill, Halton Hills Town Council, including right. six new councillors, will be inaugurated on the 21st of November. Remember, we were talking, we didn't know when it was. After 19 years of serving as mayor, of course, Rick Bennett, our buddy, will pass the torch to the new mayor-elect, Ann Lawler, who has a town councillor uh, in, uh, in her history. She was a town councillor for a decade, Thank I you, guess. Yeah. Uh, she'll be joined by regional councillors Clark Somerville, wards 1 and 2, Jane Fogel, wards 3 and 4, as well as town councillors Alex Hilson, our buddy, and Mike Albano from Ward 1. Jason Brass and Joseph Rasinski from Ward 2, Chantel Garneau and Ron Norris, Ward 3, Bob Inglis and Darcy Keene, Ward 4. A lot of new names. A lot of new names. And, uh, and I good to see. It is. Because yeah. you can see... Well, you can get stale. The new the new councillors, the young, the young... There's a couple of young young ones in there. Alex uh, and uh, who was Joseph Rasinski, I think. Yeah, yeah he, he's like uh, 19 or yeah. something. So... Youngest counselor, Couple ward rock counselor ever. Uh, so good for him, right? And on. they're getting in there early. These guys could be future mayors in 20, <laughs> Absolutely. years from now. Oh, I could see Alex doing it. I could see Alex. Absolutely. Could, could you see. imagine Alex as mayor? You, you know, he worked so hard, and I, I'm blowing it, not just because he's my friend, but he's a good man. Yeah, oh, he's, he's a very out good there man. watering the plants when he was running the act of BIA. Every morning he'd be watering the plants, he'd be doing this. He'd be cleaning windows. He'd be doing he'll probably standing still on do it. ladders. Don't kid yourself. And, well, he's and got a lot of energy. Just to let you know, they are looking for a new Acton BIA manager now that Alex Hilson is a ward counselor. Uh, so they are looking for somebody. If you are interested, contact the Acton business. Uh, Some hard shoes to fill because he was good. He was very good. Yeah, and Josie. Josie, of, him of course. Too. Uh, we're sitting here talking about teachers uh, bitching and whining. Um, I, th this kills me, and I, I totally get why uh, Halton Transportation Services is encouraging interested residents, uh, somebody who's retired or something, to uh, Halton Hills today, staff about uh, 17, or I don't know what that means, but uh, the school bus driver shortage, big time in Halton right now. It is a big, big problem. And uh, you want to talk about teachers not getting paid enough? These people do not get paid nearly enough. They are driving around the most precious cargo, as everybody says, on the road. Yet they get paid piddly squat, so they should be the ones going on strike. But they are looking for school bus drivers, and no. uh, if you're interested, um, please contact um, uh, Halton Student Transportation Services. That's right, and uh, yeah, we got to we got to fix that problem. That kid's got to get to school. Absolutely. And, uh, now we're going to wrap it up because we haven't got much time left. Yeah. We're on with Don Cherry on the radio side now. Absolutely. Uh, and we're on locally with this show. Uh, about 9.30 every Saturday morning and about 2.30 on Wednesday afternoon following the Don Cherry podcast. We've, right in the middle of my show. That's right. Um, we have, yes, it's your show, uh, but it, it, it's heard twice a week on the local radio now as well, Halton Hills Online, our, our, our vlog that we're doing right now, right after Don Cherry. And uh, we call it the uh, Halton Hills Online Talk Hour. Uh, talky talk Don, hour. Don Cherry and uh, the three of us come on Absolutely. and relieve Don. That sounds awful, doesn't it? And relieve Don. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So join us on Halton Hills Radio, Whew. of course. Lots of stuff going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. We do want to remind people because this will be important. Uh, tomorrow at 5 p.m. in Georgetown, uh, Guelph will be closed for Santa the Claus. Santa Claus Parade at 5 p.m. 
And Mill Street in Acton will be closed at 1 p.m. for the Santa Claus Parade going on Santa's there. Santa's coming to town. Santa's coming to town! Ho, 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 ho. All right, have yourselves a great weekend, everybody. Uh, we're brought to you Max by... Tires, 9 uh, 905 873-9255. Lowest prices on tires. Get your snows on. And we'll Big Daddy you Russ Horton. Week. I'm Lee Lakin for Lee Eliwood. Have a great weekend, everybody. And we'll catch you on the B side. Is community is driven by community. You, you navigate, navigate and we drive. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And check out the Furnace Room Brewery right here in Georgetown. Chicken Man beer right here. Yeah. <laughs> you saved my ass, by the way, by saying that because she would have spanked me for not saying that. Furnace Room.